So I've laid out the gutter two inches from the back back there, and uh, I'm going to carve it with uh, uh, in the file tools. It's a 11 seven. I think that's the generally the one that's used that's used like this. Uh, the planing direction was this way, although it changed a little bit with me right over here. So I'm going to start out carving it that way. Uh, it, it'll tell me if I can't if I can't do it, and I'll come back from the from the other direction. So here we go. If I hit those hard rings, I'll wiggle right there. That's hard. Oop, there's Marilyn over the intercom again. Okay. So it's peeling up with me a little bit right there. So I'm going to see it from this side. Comes my truck. little bit of a tricky area right there, but I'll get it. Well, everything looks good except for that right there. It's a little bit ugly. I'm going to drill the depth holes now. Um, my depth holes on almost all the chairs are the same. It's three and a half inches from the spindle deck and they're three and a half inches apart and they're an inch deep and that's the way Sawyer taught me to do it. The guy that they saw your guy talking how to make chairs. And uh, it's a little harder to carve like that because it pushes your, your depth way back towards the spindle deck, but it sure is a lot more comfortable. Next step is to start carving. So I'm going to hog this material out with an ads, and if you don't have an ads, you don't need an ads for pine. You just go straight in with the scorp, and it's almost just as fast. I use the ads mainly just to, to keep in practice because I do some contemporary chairs made with walnut seats, and you, you need the ads for that. Uh, I use a short handle ads. Uh, a lot of people use a long handled one and uh, I've seen him use it. They're good at Dan Fay. I've seen him carve a seat with it. It's just, it's a great, I don't know anything about them. Uh, this is what I've always used. This one comes from uh, Country Workshops. Hans Carlson makes it. He's a Swede. Uh, so it's, it's the style that I've always used. And I use a Swedish holding system here. Instead of having to bend over on the bench like that, I just lock it in that thing. It's got enough weight on it where I can just start right into it. Uh, it's a dangerous tool. So watch out. You gotta watch out right here. You hit that wrong, it can split right across your spindle deck. So when you get right back here, you're always gonna want to go sort of like that right there with it to uh, cut it off.
see I'm down to the mark there. So you see the way I'm coming back from that side so I don't see the way it's splitting off that way. I don't want it to do that. And I stay plenty away from that gutter. I can get that with the score. I don't want to hit it. It's over with if I hit it. Okay, I rest a little bit. We can start back up. You can see I'm using one of these grippy gloves. You know, my arm's not what it used to be, and uh, so these uh, these gloves have helped a lot. I don't have to grip it quite so quite so hard. I was doing a walnut seed, I would continue to hog out some material up through here, but the scorp is so fast that uh, there's just no reason. You get diminishing returns after a while with that. So I'll take it back over to my bench there and we'll start using the scorp. I hadn't said anything about my carving bench. Um, I made it so I can get all the way around the thing. I don't have to reposition, I don't have to ever be in a position of carving that I don't want to be in. It's got uh, about 150 pounds of sand in the bottom of it, so it stays put. I can slide it still out of the way, and uh, then I've just got holes drilled all in it. With I can use these hole fast anywhere. If you don't use hole fast, find you some. They're great. <clears throat> so the scorp that I've got lots of different scorps. This is one of my favorites. It's made by Bar Bar Corton out in Idaho. Um, and uh, I started out using one just with a flat bottom and tighter curves right over here. And that worked well, especially when all I had was a scorp and then I went to a scraper. And if that's all you got, you know, you can, you can do a great chair with it. Uh, but uh, slowly as I added some tools to it, some seat carving tools that helped out, uh, then I started using this round scorp and I like it just as, I like the flat one with the corners on it, but this one's good too. Uh, you want to cut cross grain with most of this stuff, right like that. Okay. Uh, or diagonal cross grain with a skew. And that's what you always want to do. stuff you don't know how deep you've gone. So you see I'm leaving a high area here and that's where I'm going to extend that pommel. in here to the back. Now I want to be really careful and controlled here. Oh, wait, wait. So now the train's gone so now I can talk again. Uh, when I get right up here what you want to do is you want a lot more control and so you want to lock in two of your three moving parts in your arm and that is your elbow and your shoulder and your wrist is going to give you the cutting control, the fine control, but the body is going to give you your, your power. So as I come back up in here, you can see how powerful those cuts can be. You can also see how crisp and clean this, this scorp is cutting. It looks like 
it's waxy surface and that's what you want coming off of coming off of your score. Now this is the this is the tough area right here where these two points meet. And so you have to watch out here. I'm coming cross grain on that. Let's get down to the bottom of my hole. There I am. That one's that one's gone now. And now I can see really how deep to go. Well, I wish I hadn't have splintered out with me right there. That's gonna that's gonna cause a problem. I'm going to wait and get that from the other side. So I'll go ahead and get this side taken care of now. So, once again, come out of the cut. Scooping action, right like that. see that I'm going to stay inside. I'm going to cut that out, but it just helps me sort of define a space. Now I'm going to take down this. Still leaving it up a little bit, so it's going to be uh, uh, pronounced there. And I'll draw the line back on there. Now I'm ready to cut it out. Well, and I'm going to saw it out. I just saw out the front I, so I can clamp back here. So, you know, I always try to leave as much wood on as I possibly can until the last minute. Just about on anything, whether it's turning or whether it's the seat. So, I'll be leaving the back on it, be sawing out this. Probably should have changed my bandsaw blade out. You might hear it scream a little bit. Mm -hmm. 